Okay, so unit five uh, called the rationals. <clears throat> so this is going to involve fractions. And whenever we involve fractions, what's the biggest idea we can think of with fractions? Dividing by zero is a problem. That's like the biggest thing you can think of with rational functions. Okay, so that idea you have to have in mind this entire unit. You can never divide something by zero, right? What is it called? What kind of word do I use if we divide by zero? Undefined. Okay, so that's a problem with fractions. Okay, so we're going to go through um, the basic properties from when would you have learned fractions, like how to add with a common denominator. When would you have learned that? In junior high? Probably. Okay. So what's this? Anything divided by itself? One. One. Zero divided by anything? Zero. zero. Anything divided by zero? Undefined. Undefined. Okay. So those are some common themes. Um, we're going to get into something here. When something is the same divided by the same, it... it cancels. I don't know if you've ever heard that word with fractions. You cancel something. Canceling makes one. Okay. Um, adding or subtracting. What's the big picture? You need a common denominator. So this fraction plus this fraction, what would you use between a two and a four? What would you pick as a number? Four. They can both be turned into fours. So I would have to times this by two. Can you do the next one on your own without me? Did you end up getting zero on it? Okay. Okay, the next one is just a little bit trickier, but same idea. It's just that there's a three and a four, so what kind of number are you picking that's common between them? Twelve. So now this would have to get times by four, and this would have to get times by a three. Try the next one all by yourself. Whoops. Get 35 on the bottom. And then coming out to 16. Okay, can anybody think of a multiple that could work for us here? Has to be something that would end in a zero, right? Does 60 divide by eight? I don't think so. It would work for that, that, but not to eight. 120? Uh, 120 works. Okay, so how would I turn the 10? into 120 on the bottom, what would I have done? So I'm going to multiply the top by 12. Mm -hmm. 
Do you know the multiplier here? What do you do to 8 to get it to 120? And you can use your calculator on this one. 8 times 15. So then 3 times 15 is 45. And this one, mental math, how do you turn a 12 into 120? Times it by 10. Okay, times in fractions, uh, you actually just times, times. So 6 times 14 is 84, and 7 times 18 is 126. Is there something we could divide them both by, though? We can divide them both by 2. Okay, so we can do that. Divide by 2, I get 42 and 63. I feel like those would both be... Let me know something we could divide them both by. 7? So if I divide by 7, that's a 6. And that's a 9. That also is both divisible by 3, 2 thirds. I'm going to show you a different way I would have done it. So this was multiply and then reduce. I'm going to reduce and then multiply. Okay. Um, there's a 6 on the top and an 18 on the bottom. Is there something you could divide those both by? 6. So I'm going to cross off and put a 1 and cross off and put a 3. Because I divided something on the top and the bottom both by 6. And then the 14 on the top and a 7 on the bottom, what can you divide them by? 7. seven. So if I divide this by 7, I could rewrite a 2 and a 1. And now, if I multiply, I have a 1 times a 2. And on the bottom, I have a 1 times a 3. To me, that was a lot easier because then I don't need my calculator. Okay, what am I trying to be tricky with on this question? Does anybody know? I'm trying to be tricky. Does anybody see my trick? I'm trying to make you do subtraction first, which means what? You're having to think about bed mass, right? So I need to do this. I need to do that first because it's a times. So can you use my method here? Look at the top. There's a 14, bottom of 7. Should we reduce that? So I'm going to cross off the 14 top, 7 bottom. And we're saying we're dividing by 7. So I'm going to go a 2 and a 1. I'm also going to look at the 3 and the 15 division part. The 3 and the 15 can both be divided by a 3, causing a 1 and a 5. So I got two-fifths out of that times. So now I can take the nine-tenths minus two-fifths.
Okay, this is all flowing back into your brain from like your junior high days here. Okay, I'm gonna skip, skip. I'm gonna go to a division one. So anytime you see divide by a fraction, you multiply the reciprocal. Dividing by this fraction means I could multiply by its reciprocal. I'm going to do the cancel before I multiply. So there's a 6 and a 36. What could they both be reduced by? 6. So causing a 1 and a 6. There's a 121 and an 11. They could divide by 11. So with this canceling thing, it applies to anything on the top and bottom. Okay. Um, Somebody that would try to do something like this, cancel a five, a five, ye, no, that's wrong, because it's a bottom, bottom. Okay, does that make sense? That's not what you're doing. You're, you have to cancel something divided by something, top, bottom. Okay, do you remember this kind of stuff? It was called mixed fractions, a whole fraction, and then improper. Remember those words somewhere? Okay, here's what's going on. You have pies and you cut them into nine slices. So if you have two entire pies with nine slices, how many slices do I have right now? 18. Two entire pies of nine pieces is 18. And then in the third pie, you have two slices. So now I have 20 slices. So you have two entire pies with nine slices. Two entire pies with nine slices, which is 18. And then on the last pie where you're gonna take two pieces is but you're still going to leave the seven, so. Okay, here's my question. How many full times can you fit a three into a 17? Five. Five. So now, think about your pies. They are cut into threes, thirds. So if you have five pies with three pieces each, how many pieces are you up to? You're up to 15. And then how many extras on the partial pie? Two. So this would be 15, 16, 17.